Time for your news by the numbers. There's no talking points. There's no talking heads. There's no smoking guns tonight. Lovely's UI numbers. Rich. Number 2017, folks. That's right. This is the first Fowler Show episode of the year 2017. And what Yikes. better time than to reflect on some polling from our good friends at Real Clear, po Real Clear Politics. Real Clear. We have President Obama's job approval rating continues to soar, flying off into outer space yeah. as the great historical president. I mean, I think we can all agree that, uh, I mean, his, his term is coming to an end, but President Obama is going to be looked back on as one of the greats. I think that mm -hmm. people will look very fondly on his administration given just a few years time. I mean, people are already softening to George W. Bush, who arguably had a, a botched presidency. Yeah, here's the thing. Um... President Barack Obama did two things, and I wrote, there's a piece coming out, and you'll read it when I write about it, where I talk about African-American inner cities, is he was the great hope, but he also was the great, what's the right word, revealer, if that makes any sense. And the reason why I say he's the great hope is because I think to some, he showed that, you know, a black man, after 400 years of racism and bigotry slavery. and slavery, could be president of the United States. But at the same time, he also exposed that even after 400 years, we as, we as a nation have not tackled the beast of institutional racism. Because a sure, lot of the of presidents, not. a lot of the issues the president dealt with were racially motivated. I mean, some of them, not all of them, but I think the vehement hate for Eric Holder was something that was clearly racially motivated. Yeah, The I mean, fact that he couldn't get the Civil Rights, the, the Voting Rights Act, Reapproved was something I think was very racially motivated. I think the fact that Black the Black Lives Matter question uh, and issue rose out of his during his presidency also speaks to the fact that we live in, in, a, in a nation that is r racist. I mean, um, I think the perfect example was, and we talked about this last time on the show. There is no President Trump without a President Obama. Nope. I mean, it is, it is 100% a backlash of institutional racism from having the it's first snap, It's a snapback. Exactly. I mean, like a and we see this happen in American history over and over again. You know, as these civil rights, you know, wins happen, we'll, we'll see this snapback snap happen. I mean, we right saw after. that right after LBJ. So after LBJ decided not to run, then we got Nixon yep. and Ford, a total snap back in policy, mm -hmm. right? And then you had eight years of Ronald Reagan, well, really 12 years of Ronald Reagan, and then <laughs> yeah. the American people snapped back and they voted for Bill Clinton, a man from Hope, Arkansas. So, I mean, with that being said, though, President Obama leaves, the, he will leave the Oval Office, one of the most popular presidents yeah. in American history. George Bush He's left sitting the, at a 58% approval rating. Yeah, I mean, George Bush left, when George Bush left the White House, he was at 38% approval rating. Which is bad. Um, Ronald Reagan was, 60, was, at, walking out the door. was at 63%. And Clinton was at 58 and some change. Same region as Obama. But I would argue, I mean, he's at 58. Reagan's at 63. Clinton is someplace between them. That shows that, you know, no matter what you say about him, he was a very effective president. And, you know, I think we've heard, now we're hearing a lot, like there's this big debate about repealing Obamacare. But in repealing it, people are going to suffer. And, I mean, this is the first story you hear. And you're going to hear more and more stories like this if the Republicans really decide to go through with a full outright repeal. Yep. Is the story from the story from Kentucky, where these all these Kentucky coal miners who got, uh, thanks to the Affordable Care Act, there was like a black lung coal mining act in it mm -hmm. that gave them, you know, a monthly payment if they come down with black lung. And if, you, if your spouse dies of black lung in a coal mine, you know, the government provides health care for your family after the fact. Now that's going to go away if you repeal Obamacare, right? Yep. And, you know, not saying that Obamacare is perfect because there's no, when you fix a system, you're never going to get it right the first time, ever. There's never been a time where we fixed a system and didn't get one. When George Bush created the Department of Homeland Security and TSA, 
it didn't work at first. It was awful. <laughs> like, I mean, TSA, I mean, they're still pretty bad, but TSA is a lot better than, than how they, it was, when, how it was yeah. when George Bush first implemented it. It was a mess. Oh, yeah, it was terrible. I mean, people were waiting forever. And people were waiting forever. You could carry two butane lighters and not three. It was so, it was, it, it was crazy. <laughs> but then they started to work at it. Homeland Security started to take over some more departments, and they really started to streamline it down. And now I would argue that America is a safer place because of it. Did I agree with it at the time? No. But America is a safer place because of it. There's no system that you try to overhaul that you're going to get right the first time. But it's just the way it is. The benefits of the Affordable Care Act clearly outpace the drawbacks from it. Yes, premiums have gone up. And, but here's the, re the reason why premiums have gone up, once again, uh, I mean, I saw somebody on the news a couple of days ago, Rich, sort of saying, oh, well, a, a patient should know what each procedure costs. <laughs> Which... Okay, that's fine. But if you're, I mean, if I go to the doctor and, well, first I think you should streamline kinda, pricing. They really try to keep it as much of a secret as possible. Absolutely, too. and they shouldn't. But here's the truth: if I have cancer today, knock on wood, yeah. and I go in and they say this treatment is going to cost a million dollars, I'm still going to get the treatment. Yeah, and I'll figure it out later. Yeah, so I Worst mean, case scenario, I, I'm. And dead, I just don't. I don't. Know? I mean, my philosophy, which is different from the Republican philosophy, is that you should be able to go to the doctor and get the best treatment possible without having to worry about the bill. Insurance companies are profit driven. They're profit driven. They yeah. care about making money. They have a fiduciary responsibility to their shareholders to make money, which is a mistake President Obama made when he passed the Affordable Care Act. Yep. Either one, Rom says you should piecemeal. We could have done the piecemeal way. That would have been fine, too. But you cannot work with people that their motive is to make profit when your motive is to make people healthy. Because insurance companies, the, 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 the underlying goal of insurance companies is not to make people healthy. That's a lie. It's to make money. It's to make money. Yeah. And it's, it's a business. It's a business. So they want so, so, yes, they need people to be healthy, but they need a lot of, they would argue, they need a lot of healthy people to buy insurance to take yeah. care of the one sick person. Which is why I don't feel guilty. I have health insurance, um, good health insurance. And I don't feel guilty when I go to the doctor. I go to the doctor early and often because yeah. I pay you paid for it every month. And I, so if you have health insurance, whether it's most people have health insurance through their employer, right? If you have health care through your employer and you're like, oh, I don't want to go to the doctor, don't be a fool. Go to the doctor <laughs> because your company's paying a lot of money yeah. for you to go to the doctor. If, you're, if, you, if your toe itches, go see a podiatrist. Well, yeah, I mean, the insurance companies, <laughs> it's in their best interest for people to go to the doctor as little as possible. Yeah, my, it's in my best interest to go to the doctor as much as possible. Right. So I'd be at the doctor. So another quick poll. Uh, we have like a minute left in the segment here. Uh, congressional job approval showing the exact opposite of the coin. We are currently looking at a 13% approval rating and a 55% disapproval The crazy rating. part about that is that people like their hometown congressman. That's the problem. Yes. With Congress. Because everybody likes a hometown Everyone's like, well, you know, they're all crooks, but not a... Not, not Congressman Joe, Shitman. Joe, whatever, from down the street, you know? Here's my thing. I just want them, like, actually, like, and I've said this before, Congress would get a higher approval rating for me if they could all work together and pass a really good infrastructure bill. I've been talking about this for... How long has the fellowship been around? Five years. For five years, I have been yeah. talking about an infrastructure bill. Infrastructure is bipartisan. And there if Donald Trump, no party. If Tr Donald Trump is going to get an infrastructure bill done, Donald, I will send the flowers to the White House, and I'll be out there like this with a good slow clap. <laughs> I mean, I think Donald Trump is going to be in for a rude awakening when uh, he Republicans. finds out that uh, Thank he has you. no control over the Republicans Thank in Congress. Thank you. And not only Republicans in Congress. The other problem Donald Trump is going to have is going to be state Republican state legislatures and yep. Republican governors, which is where the rubber meets the road. So you could pass a big bill, but if Governor so and so doesn't want to spend the money, yep. like when Rick Scott got the three billion dollar check and he sent it back, and he sent it back, then Donald, you'll have a problem. And I mean, he did bat the Republicans off this week. With yeah. the whole uh, ethics gut ethics thing. thing, he yep. slapped him on the wrist and said, oops, <laughs> sorry. But I don't know how long that's going to last. 